Hello guys, welcome back. And now it's finally time to start writing some Puppeteer code and tests. So first, let's go to the root of the project and create a folder and give it a name of tests. And inside tests, let's create a file and let's name it example.test.js. And now we need to start always with requiring Puppeteer. So let's create a variable named Puppeteer and we need to require the module of Puppeteer. And basically what this does is that it will give us access to everything inside the Puppeteer package. So next we need to create a describe block and basically, if you don't know what the scribe block is, it's basically a wrapper around our test suite or test steps. It depends on the context. So let's give it some description. For example, my first puppeteer test. And inside the scribe, we can create as many it blocks or test steps as we want. So if you type it, and now let's give it some description. For example, should launch the browser. And then we need to specify the callback function. And Puppeteer is using asynchronous functions, which means we need to use keyword async before function. And now in this video, we need to start with launching the browser. And don't worry, it's not like in Selenium. You don't need to start any Selenium server or some other external service. Everything is handled by Puppeteer automatically. All you have to do is two lines of code. So first, let's create a variable named browser. And here we want to call a function from Puppeteer. So await Puppeteer dot launch. And basically this launch function handles everything regarding spinning the browser. And also you can pass multiple options here, but let's start with a simple one and that is headless. And let's set it to false. And basically if you set headless to false, it will always open the physical browser. And if you set it to true, it will run the test in headless mode. So this is that simple how you can change between headless and headful in Puppeteer. But that's not all. Let's now use second variable and the name is page. And we actually need to create a connection to the browser page and get access to all the Puppeteer methods. And to do it, we need to call one more function, this time from browser itself. And it's called a new page like this. And basically our setup is ready. Now if you run the script, it will basically spin up the browser in headful mode and also gives us access to all Puppeteer commands using this page. So first function we probably need to do is visiting some URL. And for this demonstration, I have pre prepared this example.com and this is super simple website where you just all you have to do is visit it. There is no interaction, etc. But it's a great example to teach you how to actually visit a URL with Puppeteer. So let's grab the URL address and copy it. And now if you want to call or visit uh, some URL, you need to do await page dot go to and basically pass it the URL as argument like this. And this way we are telling to the page to visit this URL. And when we are here, we can actually check that some element of the page is visible to make sure that our test is working and that the correct website has been loaded. So let's inspect the element. And you can see that we have this H1. So we can call one more puppeteer command. So we do page dot. And now if you type wait for selector, 
and pass it the h1 and now what this command does it will actually try to find the h1 element on the page and if it's successful it will return true and it will move on or if it not find the h1 it will basically throw an error and your test will fail so we are almost finished always last thing you need to do is to close the browser after you finish your script Otherwise, it will leave the browser window open and you will have to close it manually. So last step is to call browser.close. And as you can see, the functions are very good like English, so it's pretty intuitive. So let's now test it out. And actually to run this, we need to create a test command in the package JSON. So as you can see, we have script here, but this actually doesn't do anything. So we need to actually launch the mocha. So for that, we need to do dot node modules slash mocha slash bin slash mocha. Then we need to set a timeout for the mocha. So we will do flag dot dot timeout. And let's give it a value of 30 seconds or 30,000 milliseconds. And then we need to specify the address which test we want to run. So in our case, it's in the folder test. And that's pretty much it. So now save it and open terminal. And let's do npm run test. And as you can see, it's running our first puppeteer test. It has spin up the browser and it was pretty fast so we didn't have chance to see it but basically our test was successful we have successfully spin up the browser we loaded this website we checked that h1 is visible and we closed the browser unfortunately puppeteer is super fast so we couldn't see that everything was going on so in the next video i'm going to show you how you can actually slow down the test so you can see what's going on when you are running it but congratulations, you have successfully created your first Puppeteer test. As you can see, it's super simple, also in terms of configuration, also in terms of API. And in the next videos, we will be uh, learning a lot more commands and automation tricks. So see you there.